If you feel like your Studio Live Series 3 console's effects are a little bit limited, maybe you want to use your laptop as an effects processor. It allows you to use whatever plugin you want for your effects, and it can bring a lot of creativity and a lot of fun. And it's easy to do just with a USB cable. So if you ever wanted to do it, I'm gonna show you how, and here's how we do it. The first thing you need to do is launch your plugin host. Today I'm using Live Professor. You could use your digital audio workstation, you could use Wave Super Rec Performer, whatever you wanna do, you can set that up. Let me show you how over here on the computer. I have Live Professor set up, and on my audio and MIDI options, I have my input and output on my Studio Live 32. As I go over to Universal Control, I'm using a new Silicon MacBook Air, actually. So on here on the system settings, I turned on USB compatibility mode. At the moment, this is May of 2023, sometimes the console just disappears from the computer. I have to work to get it back. This has been the suggested solution is compatibility mode. It uses 34 channels of USB back and forth instead of 64. So you get a few less, but I'm still gonna be okay with the number of channels that I have. Though it does cut into the number of channels that I can record onto the computer at the same time. I'm probably not gonna use a DAW to record and use Live Professor at the same time. That's gonna get a little bit squirrely with the ins and outs and probably not be a most reliable solution. So compatibility mode is gonna be fine. If I need to track, I'm gonna use the SD recorder on the console itself. So that all gets worked out. Over here, so I've got USB compatibility mode on, and I could do all my digital patching from here, but let me show you the layout on how I've got everything set up for the channels. So I am using my effects A, B, C, and D send to go to the computer, and then I'm coming back on the effects A, B, C, D returns. So those are stereo returns. So I get mono sent to the computer, stereo coming back. You can see those here. On the digital patching side, if I go over here to digital patching, and I can show you on the console as well, our USB sends are now going over here from each channel, but down here toward the bottom, you can see 25 through 32. I've chosen to have those come out of, or maybe it's 25 through 29 are coming from, here we go. Effects A, B, C, and D. So these are the sends coming from the effects. I also have mix 10 because I wanted to have more than four sends and I can do that. So I'm using one of the flex mixes as a post fader aux send to get to the computer for another vocal processor. I could use it from the same send as the reverb, but I just want to have a little bit more control just in case. So I've got those sent there. Let me show you how to do it on the console. Over here on the console, if we hit home and then audio routing. We can go to digital patching, and now we have our USB sends. You can see as I click on USB 1, it's available source, or the selected source is channel 1. And remember, this is USB send, so it's coming from here to the computer. Now, if I wanted to scroll down here, you can see that I've assigned on USB 25, I've gone down and selected this as effects A. So it used to be channel 25. Instead, over here, while this little blue thing is on, we can scroll down over here. It's past all the mixes until we get to Effects A. So now I've got my Effects Mix Select button, which is out of the frame for you at the moment, but I can use that button to get over there to select those channels that I want to go to all of those. Now, it's going to bypass the internal effects when I do this when I am routing my returns, right? So. When I go to my effects returns, I'm gonna to go to home, I'm actually gonna uh, effects return A. I can select this, and then if I want to change the digital patch here, I can select my source, you can see it's USB, and 25 is left, and 26 is right. So you can see I've returned those, or they're looking from the computer to get these for the inputs of these channels. So internal effects are gone, we don't have those anymore, or at least they're not routed to come back anywhere at the moment. So we're bypassing that so that I can use these. You could put them on 25 through 32 if you wanted, if you wanted to put them on that section of the console, but I put them on the, uh, the effects returns there just because I wanted to. So back in Live Professor, I've set up my drums so that the input channel is 25, right? Just like I had the send for effects A on 25, and my returns are 25 and 26. So that's why I've routed it that way. If we deleted all these, I could show you how to do it all again. So I'm gonna save this project so I don't have to do all of it. And I'm gonna make a new project. So we're starting blank. So if you were starting from scratch, I would create mono inputs and stereo outputs. I would make 
let's say five chains to add. Uh, we'll just call them chain for right now. And our first, we're gonna have to change all this, but we're gonna have our first audio input 25, and we're gonna do it for 25 on the other one as well. So we're gonna hit okay, but we're gonna still have to adjust our patching. So our input channel is 25, that's good. We want our output to be 25 and 26. On this one, the input is 26. Now 27 and 28 will be our outputs. 29 and 30 for our outputs. 31 and 32 for our outputs. And actually I'm gonna switch this all around a little bit. Over here on our console, I can show you here. I have returned my vocal delay on the stereo channels of 23 and 24 because those were open. And those were things that I'm gonna probably ride up and down a whole lot. So it makes sense to have it on the front layer right there. So right after my singers and guitars, I'm gonna have a one empty channel for another singer, but I'm gonna have my delay return right there ready to go. That's kind of fun. So that's there. It doesn't have to have the high pass filter on there. It doesn't need a pre, but uh, we can see the input is coming from USB somewhere. I don't know where it shows it on here, but over on the console, you can see that it says the input is from USB. So we don't have to have any of the processing on there for now for our vocal delay return. We're gonna do it all inside of Live Professor. So let me label these just so I know what I'm working with. So drum verb, instrument verb, I'm gonna do vocal verb, vocal delay, and I'm gonna do a vocal pitch shift. Now this is not the type of pitch shift that you would use for say, tuning a vocal or getting it closer to the center pitch. This is a pitch shift that adds a shifted up and down version of that same vocal with a very short delay. And it gives us this sense of width and depth that is just kind of fun. It, it thickens things up a little bit. So we're gonna have that vocal pitch there as well. So our drum verb, we want to be on effects A, that's 25 and coming back on 25 and 26. Instrument verb, vocal verb, the vocal delay is where I want to change it. So I'm actually gonna have this come back on 23 and 24. So I can have that on the other section of my console. It's just the way that I think when I'm mixing. And then vocal pitch can be on 33 and the second one can be on 34. So now those are all going to return on my console that way. We take a look over at Universal Control and we can see on these channels, that's gonna show back up here. I could rename these if I wanted to. So now they're corresponding, instead of A, B, C, and D, now they're corresponding to what is actually coming in there. So back in Live Professor, we can start adding our plugins. Now, I prefer to have EQ before my reverb plugins. It helps to filter out the stuff that I don't want and I can shape the tone very easily no matter what plugin that I choose. Some reverb plugins allow you to filter it within the plugin itself and some delays have those tone controls. But if I don't have that, I wanna have that no matter what. And even if I'm auditioning different plugins, I'm gonna wanna filter the pre-EQ for those reverbs just the same. So we're gonna go over here and I like our EQ and I do our EQ four for fun because on my vocal verb, I'm not just using high and low pass filters on my vocal one. So I'm gonna turn that on, make this a low pass filter and turn it on. And now I can just drag this around. Drums, I like to take it pretty high and pretty low, very narrow bandwidth that's going to my drum reverb. I'm gonna duplicate this plugin Drag it down here, and uh, that one still says drum verb. We're gonna take that one away. Okay, so that, I know that it's instrument verb, even though it says drum verb right there, and change the tone on this one a little bit. Duplicate it again. When you repopulate it, I guess it didn't change the name when I dragged it over. So you have to hide it and then show it again. We're gonna go 200, a little bit brighter, but a little dip around 2.5K, and duplicate that. And we can put that back, make that darker. And vocal pitch, I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, fun stuff. Now we've got our pre-EQ for our effects. Now comes the fun stuff. We're going to do our reverb. So let's see what reverb we have. Let's try verb. I really like this Phoenix verb. So this one's got a lot of options and it sounds really great. I like to choose from different keywords. So. The one that I feel like did really well before was a medium plate. I don't like the high sizzler, but medium mid plate. Let's try that. So we'll do this. And again, when you're adding effects to different inputs, in live sound, it's less of an issue to get them all matched, right? We're already in the same room and there's a lot of reverberance 
happening because we're in the same space. We're just adding textures. We're not necessarily creating a sonic environment. We're already in a sonic environment, if that makes sense. That is less important to have the same reverb on your drums, your instruments, your vocals. But if we wanna to try to create the same kind of soundscape for all of these, we could put the same type of plate on all of our instruments and vocals and vary the parameters a little bit to put them in a different depth of sonic space. It's a little nerdy. I don't know if anybody in the audience is really gonna notice, but it's helpful for me. That's what I like to do, and if you hate it, you're free to do so. So we're gonna take this pre-delay up a little bit, make sure the mix is 100% wet, and about one second is good for this song. Duplicate this, drag it to the next one, and now, we're gonna make this a little bit longer on our pre-delay and a little bit longer on our reverb, just for fun. Uh, we'll see if we do or don't like it more. Duplicate this again, and now for our vocals, uh, we're gonna go up a little bit longer on our pre-delay and a little bit longer on our reverb time. I do have a video all about how I time reverb to the tempo, how it can be fun to kind of get it matched in there and give you like a half note option or a whole note option rather than every single decimal place there is in all of life. So you can check that out there if you want. Or I have tips and tricks like that in my live mixing field guide that you can find at livemixingfieldguide.com. It's got all my go-to ways that I think about how I'm gonna set up effects for drums, for vocals, vocal delay, instruments, all that stuff, all the things that I'm doing with the high pass filter and the reason why. It's all in a handy book that you can keep in front of house. You can check that out. So we've got this set up and we're gonna actually have to listen to it before we get it dialed in. Now we can choose a delay plugin and one that I kind of like the most is the H delay. It's a hard one to beat. There's other ones out there. There's lots of different stuff you can do with it. It's just a great option. There is another one. I'm gonna try it for just for now. I think it's the Epic. Yes, Epic is kind of the way that I think about delay and effects and stuff. You can have a bunch of different settings in here, a bunch of different stuff routed around, delay into reverb, different delays into different reverbs. It's a lot of fun. Let's set it up for a tape delay into a plate. So we're actually going to send this one and assign it to these other ones as well. So there's different parameters we've got. We can mute these or unmute them. Uh, a lot of fun that you can get to, a lot of power. If you get this dialed in for the different things that you like, you can get a lot of this set up in a hurry. Remember, take your mix 100% wet and lock it, but lots and lots of fun. So we can assign our tape delay to be sent to our reverb plate on A over here. So that can be fun for adding a little bit more space and dimension so you don't just have a dry delay coming back. That's kind of cool. Feedback's good on there. Happy with that. We would love to hear it. So when that's time, we'll check it out. Now the vocal pitch, I like the doubler. I really like the Sound Toys Micro shift. That plugin is just like, you know, easy button. I haven't gotten it to load on my computer, so we'll go for the doubler to mono stereo. And I do change some settings from the stock settings. I go ahead and turn off the direct sound. I don't mind it being at negative six for each of these. And the delays I make a little bit shorter because I want them to be real quick. So like 9.4 and 6.7 milliseconds is good. I turn down my detune a little bit. I don't want it to be that far off, but it is fun. If I want it to act a little more like a chorus, I can turn up the depth on how much it's going to vary up and down from there, but I keep that at zero, at least for this. But you can play around with it and have fun. It's a lot of fun when you get this dialed in. It just makes your vocals sound a lot bigger and fuller. So it's kind of a cheating thing, you know, like at least for me when I'm mixing live sound, I'm struggling to try to get the vocals really clear and almost to the point of thin sometimes. I'm, I'm hunting for that clarity and I take it too far and the vocals tend to get a little bit thin, right? And that is my Achilles heel or the place where I kind of fall off the side. I'm aiming so hard for clarity that I kind of miss the warmth sometimes. This can kind of bring that back and bring that bigness back, even though I'm, you know, hunting for that big clear vocal. So this is fun. A little bit of detuning, a little bit of quick delay goes a long way here. I need to let you hear this and I forgot to hook up my recorder so that you can. Let me see what I can do. I'm just gonna create something new here. Creating that. And I'm only gonna record the stereo bus. So I'm gonna select which tracks I arm and just main left and right. Let me load it. All right, new session again. Select main left and right, done. 
So that was easy. I'm glad the SD card was in there and ready to go. So that's another win for the pre -sonus. Let me hit play on my band in a box so that you can kind of see and hear what it is and we'll play around with the effects a little bit and we'll have fun. I mean, you already know how to route it back and forth, but we gotta listen and try stuff, right? That sounds pretty good. Now I like it better with it than without it. Let's listen to this instruments along with it. Cool, so that'll take some more refining and there's more to the process that you can work on, but when you can save it on your laptop, when you can make all the tweaks at home, even play with it with your digital audio workstation and get the presets that you really like, it can really take your mixing up a notch. The only downside of using USB as your virtual effects rack is that it makes it more difficult to use virtual sound check over USB with your computer. Now I could do that with the SD card here on the console and that's helpful, but that's one of the things that you trade off with using USB as your effects send and return. So if this video was helpful for you, go ahead and mash that thumbs up. If you like content like this and wanna see more stuff that helps worship leaders and worship sound techs eliminate the mystery and frustration around sound at church, go ahead and hit subscribe and don't ding the little bell. You don't need more notifications in your life especially not from stuff like this. So we'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.